back from the, I guess, lunch and poster session. Uh, so I'm going to talk about a, a resource today. Uh, the URL is civictv.org. Uh, it's live and you're welcome to go check it out, maybe poke around uh, while I'm giving my talk. Um, I don't have time to do a live demo and those are kind of a train wreck anyways because of uh, display issues often. Um, but uh, today is actually coincidentally the sort of official day of our beta launch where we're formally soliciting contributions from the community. Uh, and I'm going to talk a bit more about sort of the background philosophy of Civic and what contributions look like and sort of why we created this resource in the first, pl first place. Uh, and the, the reason sort of starts here, which is the, the observation that uh, large-scale tumor or cancer genome sequencing is becoming uh, routine. And of course, there's an asterisk there because it's, it's not easy. Uh, it's still very technically challenging, but a lot of places are doing it. Uh, there are hundreds, if not thousands, of centers around the world that have high-throughput sequencing instruments now. A fair number of these are doing some amount of cancer sequencing, and quite a few of these are repeating each other's efforts with regards to trying to decide what uh, mutations, variants, et cetera, are clinically actionable. Uh, and that's really where Civic comes in. Uh, but the, just to put in a bit more context, the output of, of all of this sequencing, at least in the context of cancer, uh, are generally omic events, so these are molecular events, mutations, variants, they're called by various names like this, uh, and they fall into certain categories like single nucleotide variants, uh, in small insertions and deletions, overexpressed genes from, say, RNA-seq, uh, copy number aberrations, uh, structural variants like rearrangements and fusion genes. Uh, and so we've spent a lot of time sort of automating that and becoming quite good at detecting these different types of mutations in tumors. Uh, but something that remains a real bottleneck uh, for us at WashU is uh, the visualization and interpretation of these events, uh, especially in the context of clinical relevance. Uh, so we've gotten pretty good at uh, taking all of this raw data that comes off the sequencing instruments, uh, processing it, uh, identifying these molecular events or mutations, uh, doing a lot of filtering and review and automated validation, some manual validation as well. Uh, annotating these mutations with respect to their potential functional relevance, so relevance to particular diseases. Uh, but then we get stuck at this sort of uh, interpretation and report generation step where it can take many, many hours to synthesize all of this complex genomic information uh, into a sort of executive summary that you would feel comfortable handing to an oncologist in a clinic, for example, who has maybe at best you're looking at five or ten minutes of their time that you're going to be able to, uh, to get your hands on. Uh, so there's a lot of synthesis that needs to happen. Uh, and how many people here are familiar with the company Foundation Medicine or Foundation One? Okay, so maybe 10 or so. Uh, for the rest of you, this is a company that uh, is probably far and away the most successful and most prominent uh, sequencer of tumors. So many patients now in the US and around the world, I believe as well, are sending a piece of their tumor to this company who sequences a panel of genes, it's several hundred genes, uh, and they identify mutations and they generate a report. Uh, and this is sort of an example that they put on their website at one point showing what the, this report might look like. So this is what they're imagining that you're going to hand to your oncologist, uh, which hopefully is going to guide your therapy and uh, result in you getting a better treatment than you would otherwise get without genomic knowledge of your tumor. Uh, and the sort of key element here is these interpretations. So this is the, the five or ten sentences that someone thought uh, a clinician really, really needs to know about the significance of having this mutation, H1047R, in the gene PIK3CA, uh, uh, and usually in a disease-specific context. Uh, and these statements are, are sort of the, the missing piece in, in our workflow, uh, and they're really, really hard to make, uh, and to make well is a very large curation task. So there's a lot of information that needs to be brought in from very disparate sources. Uh, and right now, these interpretations are being created in the case of Foundation Medicine by paid curators uh, with no obvious provenance, no mechanism for feedback, uh, and sort of behind closed doors. Uh, and I'm going to argue that this would really be better conducted in, in the public domain. And that's what Civic is all about. Uh, but it's part of a suite of tools that generally are attacking this problem, and these are resources to support the interpretation of uh, at the gene level, the mutation level, and then at the level of specific uh, clinical evidence. Uh, so the Drug Gene Interaction Database was uh, published a couple years ago. Uh, DOCUM is coming out soon, and then Civic is the one I'm going to talk about today. Uh, this is basically drugs and genes. Uh, this is the mutations themselves, and then this is the clinical interpretation of those mutations. Uh, and all three of those websites are live right now. Uh, and the sort of the unifying theme of them that's kind of relevant to this meeting is that they are all open source, open access, uh, and they all have a, a 
what we believe is a fairly fully featured API to facilitate other people plugging their, these things into their pipelines. Uh, and there are, are some resources. So these are the competitors, if you, will, if you will, of Civic that are out there already. So things like My Cancer Genome and MD Anderson. These are kind of like websites where a team of curators is gathering uh, these interpretations of variants and trying to uh, basically aggregate clinical significance into, into one place. Uh, and they have a few limitations that I'll talk about. There's also ClinVar, so this is the really the NIH project that's relevant to this, and it has a lot of conceptual overlaps with uh, Civic. There are a lot of other issues. This is really one of the things that led us to develop Civic. There's people like Rodrigo Dinsman that spent uh, years building a, a database in quotations of really, really rich information about uh, clinically relevant variants uh, in a spreadsheet. Uh, and he, as much as, uh, as us, does not want to maintain that spreadsheet forever. Uh, it's a very tedious and, and boring task, uh, and it's hard, it doesn't scale if, if he's doing it by himself. And he is one of many, so I know of, uh, personally of a dozen hospitals that have their own version of this spreadsheet that they have been paying a team of curators over the last few years to build up this list of variants that you should care about in cancer that may have some clinical significance and therefore you should make sure you don't miss them and you should target them in your targeted assay, sequencing assays and so forth. Uh, and then presumably there are commercial solu software solutions. I'm not aware of what, what they all are. Uh, and pharmaceutical companies probably have these kind of databases and possibly other companies as well. Uh, but Civic was really uh, created to fill some of the gaps and the, the resources that are public to some degree. Uh, and the idea is to take uh, information on the clinical impact of many cancer variants that's scattered throughout the published literature, uh, pull it into one place. Uh, this is really uh, time and labor intensive, so we really don't want to be repeating each other's efforts here. There's a ton of repetition of effort that's happening right now. We're going to try to uh, propose to avoid some of that. Uh, and the way we do that is by uh, Civic or possibly a, a federated model of Civic acting as a, a centralized forum for curation, interpretation, and debate. Uh, and the existing resources do not really facilitate computational access. They really are just kind of websites. There's no APIs. They're not open source or open access, really. Uh, some of them have uh, somewhat annoying uh, commercial licenses that are sort of interfere with your use of them. Uh, so we're going to try to get around all those problems uh, and really try to facilitate this automated report generation where you can see the provenance for how these clinical variant statements uh, were created. Um, and we're hoping that these principles will be somewhat key to, hopefully, its success. Uh, so the idea is that these interpretations uh, should be freely available and there should, they should be created by open discussion across a diverse community. So some of these things are, are quite debated. Uh, what the clinical relevance of a variant is is often not, obvi not obvious to everyone. Uh, we're looking for an interdisciplinary approach. So there's some fairly complicated genomics going on here, but it's also medicine, so we need really to get oncologists and genomicists sort of working together on this problem. Uh, above all, the content needs to be uh, comprehensive. Ideally, it's created with transparency, uh, kept up to date. That's going to be one of the challenges. Uh, and hopefully acknowledging the efforts of creators will help to, to stimulate that. Uh, the interface should, be, uh, should allow both computational data mining, but also uh, be sort of intuitive and easy to use for the people that are sitting down at the web interface and using it as, as a live person. Uh, and then we want the access to, to remain unencumbered and the curated knowledge to remain free uh, so that it doesn't get closed off, you know, a year down the road. Uh, and this is kind of what the overall model looks like. So you have various uh, actors who participate, consumers, curators, uh, administrators and moderators and editors. Uh, and really what all these people are doing are helping to build clinical uh, actionability evidence statements. So this is sort of a synthesis uh, from a paper of what the clinical relevance of a variant is in a particular disease, and then a bunch of metadata associated with that that sort of forms the, the formal data model of Civic. And we're hoping that if this works, that Civic will be used at, at least at WashU and hopefully other places as well, as if, they can, if they can find it useful, uh, to inform and capture knowledge from a precision medicine treatment cycle. So we've been going through this uh, process of identifying patients. Usually these are patients that have exhausted all uh, treatment options. They have terminal cancer, uh, but they have a, a, a few months or possibly a year to live and they want to try uh, something very cutting edge. So we take a piece of their tumor and we sequence it and we try this sort of Hail Mary. Maybe we'll find something unusual about your tumor that suggests a treatment that you wouldn't otherwise do. Uh, and we're right now we're not really capturing the outcome of that in any formal way. Uh, so we want to kind of close this loop and sort of have this, uh, this information captured. And 
ultimately, we're hoping that Civic will be the place to do that. Um, and we're going we're gonna to have to work towards that by sort of building it up from uh, starting with what's in the public databases uh, and published research as much as possible using standard ontologies and so forth. Um, and these are the people that we're really aiming at. So, sort of the initial participants will be, a lot of it will be research scientists. So these are the people that are specializing in the genomics of different cancer types, the experts in sort of uh, telling us what uh, is clinically relevant, uh, and what mutations we don't want to miss. Uh, and then some of them are also more clinically focused scientists that are really interested in uh, w these final statements that are where everything has really been boiled down to for them and they don't have to spend hours thinking about how to interpret the, a very, very complicated report. Uh, so just to give you a sense, right now when we, when we do these clinical sequencing cases, we, we actually present uh, in person a PowerPoint slide deck of sometimes 50 to 100 slides uh, and it's just this overwhelming amount of information and then there's sort of a back and forth that has to happen to produce the ultimate uh, sort of executive summary of what it all means. Uh, and so we're trying to really streamline that, that process. Uh, anyone can uh, view what's in Civic right now. You don't have to log in or have an account or anything. If you want to contribute, though, you have to register uh, and become part of the community. Uh, and you're welcome to, to try that out if, you, if you're so inclined. Uh, and you can also just download the data uh, and start using it on, in a research context. So all of the data is available along with the code that runs uh, the service. And I'll talk a bit more about that. Uh, and then as the resource improves, uh, you, we're hoping that there'll be more of a user base of people that are just using the content. As the content becomes richer, there'll be a lot of people that just go there or, or plug their pipeline into Civic to get at the content uh, and are not as involved in the, in the curation side of things. Uh, so there's usually at this point that people will have questions about uh, certain use cases. Uh, so more, just quickly, a few things that Civic is not right now. It's not a place to store variants of unknown significance. A lot of people are concerned about what we do with these things. We're not trying to tackle that problem. An interesting variant isn't necessarily clinically relevant. A variant could be very important to cancer biology but have no uh, known uh, clinical significance. Uh, it's not yet a place to store unpublished findings from th these end of one anecdotes, as, although as I mentioned on the sort of the precision medicine cycle, we'd eventually like to get to that point where that was accommodated somehow but where it was clear where that was being done. Uh, and we're thinking about sort of a mixed private public model for the data so that some of the data could relate to specific patients that perhaps has patient privacy uh, concerns. Uh, and right now, Civic is for cancer only, although there's probably not really much of a barrier to doing uh, using Civic, sort of forking it and, and having sort of a human disease version of it. Uh, right now, it's sort of been primed with 500 ev evidence statements from 230 published resources. So this is the effort of uh, our team of curators con uh, contributing, and also we're collaborating with a few other institutes who have already done some of the legwork for us, and we're sort of filling in their gaps. Uh, the civic implementation slide here is just sort of for reference. You'll be able to download this slide later. Uh, really, the only important point here is that it's a, it's a client-server model. So everything that you see when you're interacting with the user interface is a client that's hitting a server, uh, and it's all JSON uh, endpoints. So you have a very fully featured example of how you could build your own application that was perhaps part of your pipeline. Uh, that didn't have uh, U a UI, but was basically just fit your specific purposes. Uh, you could use the client for to find a lot of examples of how you interact with the, the API, because it, that's basically what it does. Uh, and it's all freely available, so the content is released under a Creative Commons license. There's no fees or exclusive access or any of that. Uh, the source code for the uh, server and the client are both on GitHub. I have a version of it running on my laptop right now, so you can spin up a, a complete uh, independent instance of it. E the data is even available in the in the GitHub repo, so you can literally create an exact clone of what you see uh, on the website at any time, uh, and the data dump will, will get done on a, a 24-hour schedule. Uh, so you can fire up a local instance, or you can go to the public instance and check it out. Uh, for future work, really planning, uh, as I said, the beta release was today, so this is uh, ongoing, so really no, need to start playing around with interacting with the community, getting curation uh, done sort of in this collaborative way. Uh, sort of more medium term, we're trying to uh, keep an eye on GA4GH standards that are being developed uh, so that we're compliant with some of the things that they formalize around. Uh, and I'll just end with this uh, acknowledgement slide. So this is the team that has developed 
uh, most of the people that have developed Civic and have done a lot of the curation. Uh, and of course, none of this would be possible without a lot of support from uh, some of our mentors and directors, especially uh, Rick Wilson, Elaine Martis, and Tim Blay. So thank you. I'll take any questions you might have.